Hello and welcome. My name is Sifas Lin, and I'm a senior content developer here at Microsoft. Today, I want to show you how to host a website or a web application in Azure based on Lesson 3.2 in Learn Azure in a Month of Lunches by Ian Folds. You can download this ebook for free at aka.ms slash month of lunches. For today's demonstration, I want to show you Azure App Service, which is a web hosting service in Azure uh, that's great for web developers because it supports all the most popular programming languages that web developers use. So we're going to create a resource group. We're going to create an app service plan, and then we're going to create an app service app. After that, we're going to deploy a simple HTML page to Azure, and then we're going to see it running live in Azure in minutes. With that, you get the benefit of security, high availability, and uh, scalability uh, that Azure has to offer. So let's get to it. So to get started, uh, open a, a web browser and navigate to portal.azure.com and log in with your Azure account. And once you're logged in, you're going to see a home page like this. And then go, go ahead and go to create a resource. And then click web app. A web app is just an app service app. And in this create page, uh, you can specify the resource group you want uh, and the app service plan you want and then the app you want. Uh, but for uh, this video, we're going to create everything. So let's create a resource group. Call it MOL for month of lunches app service. And then for the app name, let's give it a unique name called pizza lunches. Okay. And because you're just uh, deploying HTML code, so let's stick with code. And then for runtime stack, let's pick SPNet 4.8. You won't actually be running ASP.NET 4.8, but uh, that allows you to run your HTML code. Okay, down to App Service Plan, you can see that a name is already generated for you uh, for a new App Service Plan. And then for SKU and size, let's click Change Size. The standard S1 tier is already picked for you. In fact, the higher the plan you, you select, the higher the, the density that you can host your app. So in, in the end, it actually saves you money. But because this is just a demo, let's go to Dev and Test and pick the free tier so that uh, you won't uh, lose any money. Okay, let's click Apply and click Review and Create. And then click Create again. So now Azure is uh, creating all the resources that you just specified. Uh, that includes the resource group, uh, the app service plan with a free pricing tier, and also the app service app. And just give it a second. Once you see this message that says that your deployment is complete, Click on this go to resource, which will automatically take you to the management page for your new app service app. Um, and then go here to the URL of your app and see what happens. Right away, uh, I just want to point out, uh, if you remember, the pizza-lunches right here in the URL is the name that I chose for the web app name. Um, the, the name that you choose for the web app name um, is part of the URL, so you want to make sure that it's unique. But great, now you see a splash page. Um, that means something is running in Azure. Uh, so it, it's exciting, but uh, not so exciting because it's not your code. So that's what you're going to do next. Uh, you're going to um, download some sample code and then try to deploy it to this app. So let's go back to uh, the Azure portal and then click here 
for the Azure Cloud Shell. So the Azure Cloud Shell is a terminal environment inside your browser. Um, uh, and you can, you can run it anywhere because it's in the browser. Uh, and and there, there are two variants. One is Bash and the other one is PowerShell. And for this video, we're going to stick with Bash. Um, it, this, this Bash shell is in your browser is great uh, because not only can you run all the Azure CLI commands to manage your resources, but uh, it also comes with a lot of great tools, including Git, uh, because the sample code you want is in Git and it's in GitHub you're going to use Git to uh, bring it down to uh, your local folder. Local means local to your cloud shell. Okay, so let's paste this command called git clone and with this uh, URL to our uh, GitHub repo. Great, so, uh, but before we move on, if this is your first time running Git inside the cloud shell, you're going to uh, need to tell Git who you are. So let's run Git config global user.email. And then here, I'm just going to use my own. And then you have to run Git config global user.name. Okay. okay. So now your Git installation is configured. Let's go see our sample code. Let's go to CD into the repository and into the third module and the prod folder. Let's take a look at what's here. That's it. That's our, uh, that's our quote, quote website. That's just one HTML page, uh, which is kind of simplistic. But you can kind of imagine if you have a Node.js app in this folder or a Python app in this folder, you would use the same steps to deploy them. So you have a folder with some files or here a file, but in order to uh, deploy it to your app service app with Git, this needs to be a Git repository. So uh, let's initialize a Git re repository using Git init. And then once we have this initialized Git repository, let's add the files to it, git add period. The add period adds all the files in this folder into the repository. And then once we add them, we need to commit our changes. Let's have a nice commit message. Pizza. So this Git repository is ready to go. However, on the, on the app service side uh, for Pizza Lunch's app service app, this app by default uh, does not accept Git deployment yet. And so you need to configure that. So you're going to run az web app deployment source config local git and then give it a name of your app, which is Pizza Lunch's and also the resource group name. So this command outputs a, a URL that you can use for your Git deployment, but what's embedded in it is the user level credentials. And if you read the book, the book tells you to uh, use the user level credentials to deploy your app. But uh, in this video, I want to show you how to use the app level credentials. The user level and app level credentials are both, both credentials that you can use to deploy your code to an app service app. The difference is that the user level credentials can be used to deploy code to any app in your subscription. Whereas the app level uh, credentials can only be used for that particular app. And so, in a sense, you can say that the user level credentials are more convenient while the app level credentials are more secure. So to use the app level credentials, let's find them first. We're going to run az web app deployment uh, list publishing 
credentials. And then you're going to give the name of the web app again, pizza lunches, and then the resource group name. Okay, so in the JSON output, uh, you see the publishing username here and the publishing password here. But even better, uh, there's a pre-crafted uh, URL for you uh, for your deployment that has the username and the password already embedded. So we're going to copy this. And then we're going to add this as a remote into your local GitHub repository. So let's do git remote add Azure. That means add a remote to this Git repository called Azure. And we're going to paste this URL. Don't run this yet because notice here, this uh, dollar sign pizza is going to be interpreted by bash as a variable. And we don't want to, we, we don't want bash to do that. So we're going to work around it by adding us single quotes. And the single quotes will, will make sure that that bash interprets that character just as a dollar sign character. Okay, so now you just need to do a git push to that remote. Push Azure master. Great. That's it. The code is deployed. So you just go back to the web page and refresh it. Wonderful. Now you see that the HTML file is deployed and it's displayed uh, at the URL. This is great, but what if I tell you that you can do all the things that we just did, including creating the resources and pushing your, your code to Azure with just one single Azure CLI command. And I want to show you right now. So if you go back to the Azure portal, back to the uh, Azure Cloud Shell, let's assume that you're already in the folder that you want to deploy, and then you haven't deployed any resources yet. So let's run AZ Web App. And let's give it a different name called pizza lunches quick because it's quicker. And then let's add a uh, HTML flag. This tells the HD web app up command not to try to interpret the files that are in the, in the folder because those are just HTML files. Okay. So let's run it. So immediately the, the, AZ Web App Up command recognizes that the, the web app called Pizza Lunch is Quick doesn't exist. So it tries to create a resource group for it and an app service plan for it and the app service app for it. And once the resources are created, it will try to zip up all the content of the folder and then upload it as a zip package, which is what it's about to do right now. See? And so the, the nice thing about this approach is that you don't even need Git and you don't even need uh, to play around with publishing credentials because that one command does all of that for you. Okay, so now the, the app is deployed. Let's go to Pizza Lunch is Quick and see what happens. Great, same result. The HTML file is deployed to this new app and it doesn't take that many steps, just one step. You can imagine that, of course, this is done in Azure Cloud Shell, but if you were uh, on your own development machine and you have an app in your in this one folder that you want to deploy, you just need to install Azure CLI on your local machine and then you can just use AZ Web App Up to deploy. And Let's say you made any changes and then you want to redeploy your app. You just run the same command, 
And you don't even need to specify the resource group or the app service plan or the app name again, because the first time you ran the command, AZ Web App App already remembered it and then stored it into the, your, your local folder. And so now anytime that you want to redeploy, you just run AZ Web App up like that. And of course, if you have something other than HTML, then you will just run that. Uh, you would just run it without the HTML flag. And of course, I don't expect anything to change here. I'm just showing you that that's all you need to do to redeploy. And the command recognizes that uh, the Pizza Lunch is Quick app already exists. And so it's not going to try to create any resources and it will just try to perform another zip deployment. So great, this is the end of the demo. Uh, I showed you two different ways to deploy a simple HTML site to Azure App Service. You may ask which way should I choose? Um, that's really a, a preference matter. You may be already using GitHub to do source code management, in which case a Git deployment would really make sense. But you know, if not, then AZ Web App Up may offer you a very easy way. AZ Web App Up it doesn't um, support all the the language runtimes. Uh, right now, according to the documentation, it only supports Node, Python, .NET Core, and ASP.NET. So it may factor into your decision whether to choose AZ Web App Up. If you enjoyed this tutorial. The ebook has even more examples waiting for you to work through. Download your free copy of Learn Azure in a Month of Lunches 